like such a list. We got Bitcoin and Ether and Dogecoin and stable coins and altcoins and what what weather coin? Welcome to what is it about the weather? A podcast where we explore the many ways that weather entwines itself into our lives. I'm your host, Mark Jelinek, and this week we're going to be talking about a little about uh, crypto weather. Whether it's a real thing, whether it's going to be a thing. Before we get there, as always, I hope you're having a good weather week, or weather month, or whatever, weather day, whatever it's been since your last episode. I finally got some snow. Happy about that. Kind of what I call a, you know, a not nothing event, but not an overwhelming event here in the New York City area, about four to six inches of snow. It was a little on the higher end of that where I am, but it was kind of the regional averages. Now, to my south, they had a couple of snow events back to back. And both cases, I think they got more. Actually, the previous one, the first one, and you may have seen something in the news, was kind of devastating around the nation's capital. People got stuck in the inter- a big major interstate for like a day. And I was reminded of all these ones I've lived through, you know, growing up in Atlanta. I mean, anytime they happen, you know, everybody's. They're always surprised, right? But usually what it means is there was some that were going to happen or were going to be these big things and they didn't turn out that. So people you know, kind of relax a little bit. And I guess my reminder always is if there's forecast of a potential big event, put things on hold you don't have to do. <sighs> Speed up or, or I, you know, try to shorten your timeline so that you're not stuck when the stuff starts coming down. Because it can happen. And a lot of times we can avoid things without it being a major shift. I, I know we can't always do that. And, you know, and like there was an example in the story. There, I put a story in the show notes so you can read about it a little bit. Family was trying to get home from being on vacation in Florida. Two flights canceled due to all the things that have been happening in the holidays between weather and COVID, et cetera. And they rented a car. We're trying to drive home. Got stuck on the interstate for an hour, not an hour, for for a day, essentially. I feel for them. I don't know what else to do other than to say, you know, maybe one more night in a hotel would have been a good thing just to see how it pans out. It's so easy to say, right? I wasn't in their shoes. I, I'm sure they just wanted to get home. And this was one of those cases where things just got stuck. And I know we're always looking for somebody to blame. And they'll hopefully, there'll be lessons learned. That's the only thing I can hope for in this. Didn't sound like it was too devastating. Doesn't sound like it was a great night for, for the people stuck on the road. But it, it seems like most people pulled through okay. But reminder, right? Now, I did come across a story. It was interesting. I, I this story was different than what drove me to talking about financial stuff, but I found an article. It was in, you know, I was doing some searches on stuff and it was weather forecasting versus financial planning. And it was a great article. It was going along really well, kind of doing these analogies between, you know, probabilistic forecast, things you've heard me talk about before and how that ought to apply more in financial planning. And then of course, in the end, right. They made a statement that was nobody nobody can accurately predict the future in in weather, or they added or the stock market. And I started thinking to myself, man, that's just not right. I mean, you, you just blanket said something that we can't predict the weather. Well, you can. Depends on how much precision you need and what timelines you're looking at and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't put them in the link in the show notes. All right, lastly, I do want to take a moment to thank Aaron. Aaron, you know, you've heard me mention him here before. Aaron's a hydrologist, and I, you know, my work previously at, and at times still touches on hydrology, particularly when I do snow type stuff, because snow really bridges that gap, right, between falling out of the sky and being meteorology and shaping hydrological behavior in a lot of regions where they get snow more than rains throughout the year. So you get a period of snow during the year. And those, the way the snow melts and the timing on that really influences water supplies and those sort of things. So it's a, it becomes very much a hydrology issue. So I, I, I love that space and participate in it. But Aaron kind of reminds me is even though he works in the hydrology space, he likes to touch on meteorology and always has good stories to share. And he was sharing one that was relevant to last week's episode where we were talking about forecast and probabilities of precipitation and 
even as he said, mileage may vary because verification, which we really didn't touch on, and we do from time to time, can be an iffy part of that equation in that he grew up in a place in, in Florida, actually, where, again, he or at least for a period of time where he could see a thunderstorm, right, going across the street or wherever it was, and I, I've seen the same thing before. Didn't hit him. He didn't get any rain, but somebody got a lot of rain. Right, there be this big deluge of rain, and which point verifies. And and my answer to him that I'm I didn't tell him uh, in an email, but I'm telling him here in this episode is it depends, right? And so mileage may vary. That point may not verify as having received precipitation, and it might, and it just depends on what verification approach is used and whether you know there's some way to measure it at that location. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a piece of equation that's that's relevant for how you would come up with estimates, but it also depends on if you're grading somebody, how do you go about grading them and whether their forecast was accurate or not. So it's a valid consideration. But thanks, for as always, Aaron, for, for sharing. And also thank you for supporting the podcast. And you too can support the podcast if you'd like. What is it about the weather, right? You can support us at patreon.com slash weather. It's easy enough to do. Every amount helps. And as you know, the goal is not for me to get, you know, if I can make a living doing this, yeah, I sure I'd love to. But I don't. I try to make sure that we cover the basics that create good quality content. All right. And all that support is useful and helpful. Patreon.com slash weather. Now, if you just want to send me a note, anything else, what is about the weather at gmail.com where you can find me on Twitter, either through the podcast, what is about the weather or Mark underscore Jelanik. Love to hear from you. All right, let's talk a little bit about our main topic. So we're going to talk today about a hot topic out there, crypto. You can't go very far in a news cycle anymore without hearing something about crypto, whether it's the currencies or, or blockchains and all this stuff and whether it's booming or busting and what's the future and how it's not worth it. You know, it goes on and on and on because it's controversial. It, it plays well to news cycles, right? Now, what brought me to this, I've been following a lot on crypto but what was interesting is I, I saw, I was reading about some different cryptocurrencies because one of the ways I like to learn things is to dabble in, if I can, in a low end. And so there are a lot of cryptocurrencies that are low cost, the low barrier to entry, if you will. And you can kind of play around and learn, you know, different tools. Maybe you're looking at a new, you know, program to use, app to use, website to use, whatever it is. And... I saw this thing come up of weather.finance and it it actually taught me more about the whole world cuz I you know it's like oh cool I'll buy a, a weather coin that, that uh, you know for me it'd be awesome right but I couldn't find anybody that was any of the exchanges that were actually selling this coin and then I come to find out it existed apparently for about 3 months earlier in 2021 and then went away now I don't know the details I haven't been able to actually track down was this a scam was it you know, any things, but kind of fit into that mysterious nature of crypto everything. But it made me think about really what is weather's connection to the crypto space. Now, crypto is a very tricky topic because there's no way I can even begin to cover everything there is to understand about crypto. And this isn't like talking stuff that we've heard about our whole lives. It's a fairly new thing, right? It's it's maybe a 10-year-old industry, more or less. And there's so much that's thrown around that you don't know a lot of times what's going on underneath. So I'm putting a couple resources in the show notes. So first is a, a podcast called The Crypto 101 Show. It's like 12 episodes for about 8 to 10 minutes a piece. And if you're interested in learning, now this one's geared towards understanding the terminology and phrases associated with buying the currency element of it. So it's good from that standpoint. But I like it. Link in the show notes. The second one is an article about blockchain. Okay. And blockchain, the best way to think about it is just the environment in which these currencies exist. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit more about what the blockchain is and why it may or may not be relevant to weather and weather data. 
but I put an article there, but another place you can go is to Ethereum, which is a name that you may have heard. There's a, a, a coin called Ether that's traded out there, but this is Aside from Bitcoin, it's probably one of the bigger names you'll hear around cryptocurrency, but Ethereum is more one of these blockchain technologies, okay, where, where crypto transactions and applications, it's more than just the currency can exist. And like I said, we'll get into a little bit more about that, but their website has an excellent amount of articles written to try to help everybody understand. So it's good from that standpoint as well. So those are just some things that are there. Okay. Now let's talk about the weather connection. Now did some searches. One of the first things that came up, you know, was an article about how weather influences crypto traders. I got through it. I felt like, wow, I've read this before because mostly all it did, and they even stayed in there, was reconfirm things that we've talked about before in this podcast in the past about how weather influences trading and markets in general, particularly temperature. But it goes through that whole thing. And I was it was funny because they, they get to their conclusions, they, and they basically just say this reaffirms what we see here, here, and here. Now, their paper used some new kind of flashy ways to analyze the data, if you will, because... One of the things you've likely heard about cryptocurrency is in recent times, it's very volatile and trying to di dissect whether weather is part of that, I think gets a little more tricky. I think if you looked at earlier on in the behavior, maybe it was a little more relevant, but now there's so many weird things that can go on that extrapolating weather on that to me would be questionable whether you could accurately do it or not. But in any case, link in the show notes to the article if you want to read it. But then I started looking about and thinking about weather data, okay? And this is a point where we need to talk about blockchain and what it is and, and kind of the role that weather data could play. So when you think about something as pure as Bitcoin, Bitcoin's supposed to be a currency. Now it's turned into something far beyond that, but the whole idea was it was a way, and in, in thinking about cryptocurrencies in general or, or crypto technologies in general, the best way to think about it is you're supposed to be taking control from one or two governments or agencies or corporations, whatever one is, particularly big, powerful ones, and saying, we're giving this to the masses, if you will. All right. And it does that through something that's called decentralized behaviors. And one of those things is this blockchain. So this blockchain, the idea is this is this very public thing, right? It's a public place for transactions to go down. So you can see that party A gave party B how much currency was. And it's recorded for all eternity, if you will. All right. But it's open. We can all see that transaction. But one of the things this Ethereum company did, because they were thinking beyond just the currency point, is they made it possible for you to put, for instance, uh, an application, a software application out there, or something called smart contracts, where I enter into an agreement with you. I want to, you, let's say you've got, I don't know, a. lawnmower you want to sell and I need a lawnmower but clearly it's used you got to use lawnmower and I want to know that it's going to meet certain conditions before I'm going to give you the money or you're going to give me a guarantee that it's going to work for such a period of time or you're going to refund me some portion of the money so a smart contract is a way to write up those stipulations without a lawyer without other parties involved but it, you got to think about this it's got to be something that you can put in code and it's a bunch of if then statements. So if this happens, I then give you the money. And if then this happens, you might refund me part of the money, whatever it is. So the blockchain itself used to be a ledger of these transactions, but now it's a ledger of all this additional information. Okay. So I started, you start thinking about it, you go, okay, well, what does that mean in terms of how do you validate those? And is there ever a case for weather data to be used in that? Because you can imagine an insurance policy as an example, or, you know, you want to do some things in terms of your protecting your crops, whatever it might be. There, there are a lot of people that, as we know, that there are all these transactions that happen all the time 
that weather is related to, whether it's a direct input or something that you may cover yourself because of a weather outcome. And I came across an article that was written around the time that IBM bought the Weather Channel, and it was even speculating, hey, IBM ought to figure out a way to put their weather data in the blockchain. Now, some of the early blockchain technologies really weren't designed for this, but this Ethereum platform provides at least an avenue for that with another third party. This is the part that gets me when we talk about crypto is every time I turn around, you know, there's this ideal of giving it to the masses and no one controls it to, you know, People are going to control it because there's got to be a methodology to get from here to there again, but I'm not going to digress in that. And there was so many this year. So AccuWeather this year has officially announced that they're going to make their weather data available to the Ethereum platform for smart contracts and for other applications that exist on there. Now, they've got to work through a third party because they can't directly do it because it's not designed to just... You'd overwhelm the blockchain if you threw weather data out there all the time, right? But they're going to have a way for people, I guess, to, and I didn't get in the technology details to utilize their, whether it's their forecast or their data on the other side, their verification data, if you will, back to Aaron's point, as a way to, you know, answer the questions, Was were these different criteria, Matt? And... And I started thinking about this, and I thought, that, that's a really cool idea, because then me, right, just good old Mark, could take his weather data he gathers when I go out on a bike ride and have my little weather gizmos on my bike. I could take that data and make it available for a fee. I mean, that that's the whole idea, right, is it's creating a marketplace where... We take out the need for, I mean, this is the idea. It, get, it gets rid of a wholesaler and a, and a retailer and a, or a salesman and all that stuff, and it makes it just, there's some methodology for me just to buy from you. Now, it's not that simple, right? To make that, you still have to have some version of these, whether they're written in code or whether they're actual people. So, but hopefully you reduce the transaction cost. That's the idea in the end is, you know, I don't pay you with a credit card company who then takes their fee and whatever. I give you a Bitcoin or an Ether coin or whatever it is, and you give me weather data. It's pretty simple. And if you think about it from that regard, you could say, well, if that's the case, then what I could actually do is I could sell my data to somebody like AccuWeather or sell it to anybody else. And it provides an opportunity for you to do two things. You might say, I've got this data. It resides on my weather station in my house. And for anybody within a one-mile radius that lives there, and you can verify this. This is all the tricky things, right? You can have the data free of charge because maybe you're doing something and, and you want to know what's unfolding real time, Okay around you and, and you're taking advantage of that yet. And and I say that's, I'm doing that for my community good, but for somebody who wants to put it in a repository and use it as part of this service, they're going to sell, they got to pay me for it. And that way, maybe, maybe the idea is you pay me enough bitcoins that justifies me buying a new weather station every three years. So I know it's good equipment, but this is all the things. And we've talked about this before is more quality data will help improve our forecast. It helps improve on both sides, right? Better, better and more inputs can make weather forecasting better. Better verification makes those models and tuning those models better. But more does not always mean better. And just because I have all these gizmos that gather weather, if I'm not gathering it to a standardized method, doesn't necessarily make it better. And it's the same thing with transparency doesn't make it accurate. If I put something out there for everybody to see, just because I said it doesn't make it true, okay, whether I meant it, whether that's intentional or unintentional, if it's inaccurate, it's inaccurate, right? So there's got to also be some way to score these things. And, and so the idea, I guess, in the end would be more people giving data better. And then over time, if there's some way to verify whose data was best, maybe that's part of that smart contract. They're the ones that actually get the money. It's kind of like the, the miners themselves, right? The whole idea of cryptocurrency mining is you're supposed to be better at it. I mean, yeah, I, I know it doesn't exactly play out that way. 
but the the concept in the end and whether it plays out that way i just don't know i still envision in the 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 idea of what these things are great but i don't know if we're going to end up with a lot of independent people playing in the game or if we're still going to end up with systems and environments that are controlled by a few because let's be clear companies still want to make money people still want to make money governments still want to be in control people still want to be in power and how all that works into this world because all this still relies on the internet and if you go to a country that shuts down the internet well it doesn't do you any good so uh, there's still ways all around it but I, I saw an article that was I guess a little bit of a glimmer of hope in in ways that I do think it worked and sometimes I've we've we've all got to back out of the you know I live in an environment where you know, I've got plenty of weather data around me. I think the models are good. The outputs I can get are good. And, and somebody even brought up and they were talking about it, about how, you know, NOAA, the agency here has, they do, they have increasing constraints on the availability of their weather data. But they were talking about how it ought to be easier. And it's like, it's not that simple. Weather data is not that simple. And the reason is, is because there are huge repositories of data and it's not trivial, right? And if, you know, if you want to have those things, they do take time and money and whether governments are paying it for it or third parties, it's not as simple as you think. And to build a repository, if you're looking at climate data and full climate cycles, which can take years to unfold, that takes real time and effort. And you shouldn't expect it just to be this decentralized thing because, you know, one organization that wants to build something that doesn't even understand how weather data works, that's not going to be the right people to do it. Yet, do you or I want to spend the time watchdogging that? So circle goes on and on. But let's get to the sliver of hope, right? West Africa, they're doing this project with weather balloons because they don't have good coverage there where they're paying the people in cryptocurrency for their weather, essentially giving them money back for doing these weather balloon, incentivizing them to do weather balloon launches in hopes that it will create better coverage in areas where we don't have it. That's how it should work, right? And there's a link in the show notes you can read about it. But even I look at that project and I go, I can see the the noble cause, but then I start thinking about, yeah. You got a long way to go, and it's like the same thing with all this crypto. So, is weather really going to exist in the crypto world or the VR world, like we talked about? I don't know. I like the idea of more people, more inputs. Uh, me, if if I want to be a weather weenie and create all sorts of data, and it's a value to people being compensated for that without it having to be me having to go out and figure out how to sell it, I think that's great. But someone's still got to create the marketplace. So it's not just like I can go throw it in the ledger and it magically takes care of itself. There's still got to be someone pulling all that together. So I think we're in early days yet. But, yeah, might you find that the blockchain is where your weather data goes at some point? Could be. Could be. Any case, let me know your thoughts. I'd be curious to know. I don't know how much you've looked at crypto. It's a neat idea to me. There's some things that I find really exciting about it. But like I said, I still know that people in power like to stay in power and people with money still figure, going to try to figure out a way to make it not so uh, decentralized, if you will. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. But, but for sure, the next time... The next time you hear a story about Bitcoin or altcoin or blockchains, just remember there's much more to weather than the weather itself. <laughs>